Because cancer is a cell growth abnormality, a good place to start the discussion would be on the normal cell cycle. Uh, you remember we have mentioned in previous discussions that <coughs> the classical cell cycle uh, goes from mitosis to the area between mitosis, which is called interphase. Interphase has three segments. The first segment is before DNA synthesis, so it's called pre-synthetic, or G1. And then the third phase after DNA synthesis is pre-mitosis, or G2. Anyway, the transitions between these uh, four phases involve uh, compounds called cyclins of various types, A, B, C, C1, D1, all these different types, as well as proteins called cyclin dependent kinases or CDKs of various types. And it's the combination of cyclins with the kinases uh, that uh, elevate and enable one phase of the cycle to transform into the next phase. This is the primary regulation on normal cell growth. Now, uh, a discussion of cancer would not be appropriate unless you realize that there are uh, inhibitory genes and processes and proteins to these uh, cyclins and cyclin-dependent kinases. For example, there's an inhibitor called a KIP or SIP if you're talking about a cyclin or a kinin inhibitory factor respectively. And then we have the INCs, and the INCs are the inhibitory uh, of kinase, the inhibitors of kinases. Sometimes they're combined with another acronym named ARF. But just to remember, these are genes and proteins uh, which are expressed, which inhibit these processes. So we already know that the inhibition of normal cell growth is a factor. In addition, we'll see that there is a whole variety of what we call tumor suppressor genes. And really, they are not tumor suppressor genes. They're normal growth suppressor genes, but somehow they got the name tumor suppressor genes. They don't suppress tumors, they suppress normal growth. And the massive and most widely studied uh, gene in that area is P53. Uh, let's now look at the whole process by which mutated genes become cancer-causing agents. And the way best way to understand that is to remember that all of the genes in our body or many of the genes in our body which do not make proteins regulate growth or regulate DNA or regulate cell cycle in one way or another. And these are called proto-oncogenes. These are normal genes. Well, a mutation of a normal proto-oncogene is called an oncogene. And these are the abnormal genes now which make abnormal proteins called oncoproteins. And the five biggest categories or the f of uh, oncogenes would be uh, genes which code for growth factors, genes which code for growth factor receptors, genes which are involved in signal transduction proteins. And a signal transduction is the process uh, it refers to any process in which a cell converts one kind of signal or stimulus into another. Or a, any process that regulates the nucleus uh, is another category of oncogenes. And of course, we saw the cell cycle regulators as well. Now, if you hear the term oncoprotein, we're talking about a protein which is made by an oncogene. If you hear of an oncogene, you can think of it as a mutation of a normal gene. And the normal gene is called a proto-oncogene. And a proto-oncogene can generally be regarded as any gene which winds up uh, coding for cell growth regulatory processes. This is the whole concept of oncogenes. So if you were to take the category of growth factors, for example, and we talked extensively about the growth factors. They are all the GFs, for example, the platelet-derived growth factor, fibroblast growth factors, transforming growth factors, 
hepatocyte growth factors. You know, these are all proteins coded by genes, which can be called cis, HST, TGF, HGF. Sometimes the proto-oncogene has the same symbol or three-letter acronym as the protein, and sometimes it refers to the oncogene. Uh, so uh, just remember, when you see something like HGF, it could refer to the protein, the proto-oncogene, or the oncogene. And if these genes are either overexpressed or amplified, they may ultimately involve tumors in specific areas. For example, if you took TGF alpha, transforming growth factor alpha, and you, which is coded by the proto-oncogene TGFA, and it was overexpressed. Well, it has been known that that process indeed does occur in some astrocytomas or you know tumors of the glial cells of the brain. And that's the whole process for growth factors. Let's move on to the next category of growth factor receptors. Growth factors can't do anything unless they have receptors. So uh, if you take these uh, various growth factor receptors, whether you're talking about neurotropic factors, platelet-derived growth factor, uh, EC EGF uh, receptor family, well, their proto-oncogenes can be mutated, and as a result, they are either overexpressed or amplified or have a point mutation, a specific point mutation in the uh, DNA sequence. And as a result, we know that these can result in specific tumors. So if you were to take colony stimulating factor one receptor, which is the proto-oncogene FMS, if that has a point mutation, it may result in a human leukemia. So these are examples of tumors like squamous cell carcinoma of the lung, breast and ovarian tumors, leukemias, which are the result of uh, uh, overexpression or amplification or point mutations of genes which ultimately code for growth factor receptors. And I want to tell you another thing. Whenever you see a chart that I present like this or this, and it looks like horrible, like don't ever, ever think you have to memorize it unless you want to. I think what you have to learn in some of these busy charts is not everything, but just the process. So in here, I gave an example of growth factor proto-oncogenes being activated and causing these tumors. And the next one, we talked about the growth factor receptors and so on. Let's go to the next category of signal transduction proteins. You know, proteins involved in second messenger, perhaps. For example, GTB, GTP binding proteins, tyrosine kinase, RAS signal transduction. That's the big one. Uh, as well as another uh, category called WNT signal transduction. These are all signal transduction proteins. They are coded by these genes of which RAS, R-A-S, ultimately named because they were found in rat sarcomas a, a long time ago. And in most cases, a single point mutation of a gene which codes for a signal transduction protein can result in these tumors. And, uh, you know, the P53 and the RAS uh, oncogenes or proto-oncogenes, these are the single biggest and most widely studied uh, oncogenes. And they are present in the majority of human neoplasms. But specifically, if the HRAS proto-oncogene gets mutated to be the HRAS oncogene, which is a GTP bind binding transduction protein, it may wind up as being a bladder or a kidney tumor. So in all of these three busy things which we just saw, the common denominator is that in every case, we had a proto-oncogene which was mutated in some way to be an oncogene, winding up uh, expressing an abnormal protein and ultimately winding up with a specific human tumor. And really, in hematologic tumors and many, many solid tumors, you can, you can trace back processes like this. Okay, will we have time for the next one? Uh, no, we won't, but it's enough time to open the door. Let's just say we're going to talk about the uh, class of nuclear regulatory proteins next, and I thank you very much.